images of the tongue. Since man is a social being, then he has great need for expression. So for this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him the gift of speech, one of the greatest blessings of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Al Rahman, the merciful, has taught the Quran. He created man and he taught him speech. However, this magnificent blessing can turn into misfortune if man does not use it well. A terrible harm can occur to man both in his this life and in the hereafter if he does not utilize his tongue for the sake of Allah. The Messenger of Allah has explained the tremendously dangerous nature of the tongue in many of his hadith. He said, the faith of a servant of Allah will not be straight correct until his heart is straight and his heart will not be straight until his tongue is straight. He also said most of the mistakes of the son of Adam are from his tongue. He said when asked shall we be taken to account for what we talk about? He replied does anything cause people to be thrown on their faces into hellfire more than the harvest of their tongues? These strong warnings regarding the dangers of the tongue were due to the fact that the tongue has so many possible flaws. These flaws include lying, backbiting, storytelling, abuse, cursing, indecent talk, argumentation, useless talk, talking about things of no concern to one, disclosing secrets. Some scholars counted the sins which can commit by the tongue, which is 80 sins. Today and in the past, there has been three shortcomings, negative aspects to do with the tongue, namely abuse, cursing and indecent talk. The example and model for Muslims is the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who throughout this whole world, life, his whole life, had never uttered an unpleasant word which would harm the listener or violate the rules of decency. Anas, the companion of the Prophet, who used to serve him said, Rasulullah was neither sabab, sabab is one who abuses others, nor a fahish, one who speaks bad words, nor one who curses others. When he wanted to criticize or blame someone, he would say, what is wrong with him? May his forehead be covered with dust. As for his instructions, Rasulullah in prohibiting abuse, there is his saying, abusing a Muslim is transgression and murder of a Muslim is disbelief. Iyad ibn Juman said, I said to the messenger, O Prophet of Allah, if a person who is less than me in status abuses me, is it wrong if I take revenge? He said, the two persons who exchange abuse are two devils who are lying and taking falsely, talking falsely. This is as far as abusing is concerned. As for cursing, Again, our example is Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who purified his tongue from cursing anyone or anything at all, not even the unbelievers who harmed him. It was said to him, O Messenger of Allah, supplicate against the idolaters. He replied, I have not been sent as a curser, but as a mercy. Cursing means to ask Allah to deprive a person or thing and to expel him or her or it from the mercy of Allah. It is not right to curse a named person, even if he is an unbeliever. However, it is permissible to curse certain qualities and bad traits which Allah or His Messenger have cursed by way of warning against them. Allah says in the Quran, Verily, Allah has cursed the kuffar and prepared for them a blazing fire. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, cursed the one who pays for a bribe the one who takes it and the middleman. He also cursed one who pays riba interest and the one who takes it. He also cursed ten people in alcohol, including the one who drinks it, sells it, carries it, produces it, etc. He cursed the woman who imitate men and men who imitate women. As for his instructions against cursing, there is a hadith. It does not befit a faithful that he or she should opt to cursing. He also said, those people who are addicted to cursing will neither be intercessors 
nor witnesses on the day of judgment. In the third hadith said, when a person curses something or someone, the curse ascends towards heaven, then all the gates of the heaven are closed against it. Therefore it descends to earth and the gates of earth are closed against it. After this it turns towards the right and to the left, and when it finds no way there too, it turns to the person or thing which has cursed and gets attached to him or to it, if, if the same may deserve it, otherwise it turns to the one who utters it. As for indecency in speech, it is known that Rasulullah was not indecent in his speech, as Anna said. As for his warning against indecent and bad language, it is noted in the hadith, a believer is neither a scorner, nor a curser, nor an obscene, nor an abuser. We notice that some Muslims who mix with people who use bad language, they pick the habits and use it themselves. This is haram and it also sets a very bad example for children. The Muslims should remember that who or whatever words he speaks is recorded either in his favor or against him. Allah says in the Quran, truly they are over you generous recording guardians, angels who know what you do. He also says, he man utters no word, but there is with him a ready observer. So Rasulullah said, a man speaks a word that is pleasing to Allah, which he does not think will reach as far as it does, but for which Allah writes his pleasure for him until the day he meets him. And a man speaks a word displeasing to Allah, not thinking it will reach as far as it does, and for which Allah ta subhanahu wa ta'ala writes against him his displeasure until the day when he meets him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are very conscious how we use our tongue and only use it for the benefit and pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us and to gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amen.